Hemochromatosis, it basically is a build-up of iron in your body. So what it means is that your body stores the iron. So by giving having a venesection, which is taking 500 mils of blood, your body needs iron to make blood. In that 24-hour period while your body's replenishing the blood that you've just drained, it's sucking those deposits off your organs. So you can't dialyse it, you can't get in there and scrape it off or anything. You can't have an operation. You can't have an There's operation. There's only one answer to it, and that is literally giving blood. I started um, getting venesections as quick as possible. So I was getting weekly venesections, I think, for five weeks in a row or something like that. Um, but from the very first one, I just knew it was good because I felt so much better after, after the first one. So in terms of managing the condition, for me, it's fairly straightforward. It is just a routine blood donation. Um, so now that I've got my iron levels down to the point where we're just maintaining them, every three months or so, I just go to the Red Cross Blood Service and donate some blood. For a few months, I gave blood every two or three weeks. And that brought the iron levels down fairly quickly until we got to a point where myself and the GP were happy with those. And once we got to that point, I was able to just maintain it. And probably every year I'll go and get my, my iron levels checked, just going to the GP and doing a pathology test for that. That's really all the management that's involved in my condition at the moment. So it's really not a burden on my life at all. I suppose anyone could go in and get a blood donation, provided that they're healthy enough. I get put on this list for... It's a, it's a more medical treatment, so I've got to actually go in and get this blood taken out of me so that I can feel better. You plateaued for at least eight or nine months yep. and you really get to the point where you think this is not working. Like while his levels are maintained at such a high level, what damage is it doing? And then we went to a blood specialist um, yeah. and he said it's really common, especially with someone as high as James, to plateau at a certain level don't get disheartened, keep going with the procedures because you, you sat at about 3,000 3, yep. and then I reckon within a month he was banged down to about so, seven or 800. So He said what it is is it's pulling the iron off all your organs so therefore it's going to sit at a section saturation and then eventually once it gets majority of it off it'll start to drop. Well within the first 15 to 20 minutes of donating blood I start to have more energy and I feel like I could go for a run, go to the gym, go and do anything I want. But after the, that, the next month and a half, two months is really good because you have all this energy, motivation to do anything you really want. Two months in, two and a half months in, that's when my iron levels start to get past the regular point. The blood bank did take the initial one, um, which was great because we, we, at that stage, were still travelling a fair bit. so. We thought, this is excellent, there's a blood bank everywhere. <clears throat> James's blood's a little bit rare, so, you know, we would have been able to benefit other people by, by donating blood. So they won't take your blood if you're unhealthy. Um, you've got to be a healthy person, and having hemochromatosis is not a, what they call unhealthy. It's only if you have a, another side issue from the hemochromatosis, which in my case is cancer. It's a genetic disease which you can't control, because genetics is genetics, it's who you are, and... There's very few options for you to get rid of. There's only really one that I know of is giving blood. So that's all you can do. There's not any rocket science about that. And the best way to give blood is through the blood bank. So if the blood bank decide, no, we, don't, we can't accept you because you're not healthy enough, then you do it through the hospital system. And I actually had quite a phobia around the needle, though, and getting the blood out. Like, even just a little needle for a blood test is, was a bit of a thing for me back then. Yeah, it was... A bit hard for me at first, but um, it, as time's gone by, I've got more accustomed to, to that. I used to be petrified of needles, would almost f pass out at the sight of them, thought of them. I w wasn't a fan, and ever since I've had it, every time I go to donate blood, I've gradually become more and more okay with them. I'm still at a point where I don't like them, but I'm getting there. For people who don't like needles, I can say, because I've had these blood donations before, it's actually not that bad. You feel like a tiny bit of pain for not even half a second and then that's it. Then you're underway. 